Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for uh, coming out to our Bright Track um, and PBS collaboration webinar. Um, my name is Steve, and I work with Bright Track, and Brendan on the other screen works over with PBS. And we're just going to spend a little bit of time talking about um, both what Right Track and PBS is providing, but also how we've formed this unique relationship that allows us to do the Right Track and PBS integration as well. So just want to give you a, a couple of little housekeeping things as we get started. Um, this is recorded. So for those that you, of you that are attending, if something comes up, you have to pop off, or if you want to share this with somebody else in your organization, we'll have a link that's available for you. We also um, are having a survey at the very end of the webinar. It's just three or four questions. If you could just take a few moments and just answer those questions, gives us some feedback of how we're doing um, and making sure that we're, we're reaching our audience. Um, we're, we're focusing on trying to get this webinar in, in a 30 minute time period. Um, we've done a couple of run-throughs. We've been a little long, we've been a little short, but we're shooting on 30 minutes. Um, if we have time at the end though, um, and we are a little long. If people want to drop off, we, we do want to leave um, some time for question and answers. Um, so if you're able to stick around and, and submit questions there in the chat box, feel free to go ahead and do that. And um, and we're so excited that you all of us join us. We have a great crowd, some new people, and some old faces as well. So we're looking forward to get started. So again, my name is Steve Canning. Here's my contact information as we go through this. If you have any questions, if um, you want to um, reach out to us, feel free to give me a phone call, send me an email as well. But just some information about Right Track. So Right Track is a juvenile facility youth management and case management system. And we are specifically designed for juvenile justice uh, facilities. And the benefit of Right Track is what we've designed is a system that allows you to enter as much day-to-day -day operations of running a juvenile facility within Right Track, and then allows you for reporting on the system as well. And people will ask, well, juvenile youth management case, that's, that's a lot. Well, really we're describing the same things, but I use those three terms because Right Track really um, is designed to do all of those things, manage the facility, manage the youth, and getting information and entering information onto the youth, and then allowing for the case management functionality as well. Today, we're gonna to focus primarily on the integration with PBS with the Right Track facility module, um, but we also offer a probation module as well, and those can be used separately, or they can be used as a, a complete module, so you really get that first point of entry all the way to a, an admission, even um, follow-up, um, back in the community, reintegration back in the community, Right Track can be used as well. So Right Track is a web-based system, you know, especially in the environment with the pandemic that we're living with and people working remotely or, or on tiered schedules. As long as you have access to the internet, you have access to Right Track. Security is built within the platform um, so we can keep confidential information confidential. And as I had mentioned, we want to be a single point of entry for all the youth and, the, and all the information on a facility is available in one place. Right Track is designed to be able to use as a standalone system or as to be able to be integrated with existing systems, such as our PBS integration. Um, but we can also do integrations with court systems. If you have a FOB system or things like that, we can um, pull data from those systems as well. And then we offer a standard platform, but we also have customizable features as well with the ability to integrate things like risk assessments, even doing customizable reports. So Right Track is unique because we are based off of the person. And so information is entered into Right Track based off of the off of the youth. And so that's why we call it a person-centered system. And so we start off with Right Track with a person management. And it, this just gives you a breakdown of some of the tabs that we're able to enter information on. Here's a copy of a screenshot of what the person system looks for or is available. And so you're able to upload picture documentation, names, social security number, date of births. And right track, we do a lot of drop down menus. Those drop down menus are imported as part of the implement, implementation process but an administrator has access to really make customizations to those drop-down menus. 
So a good example of this is like sexual orientation. So if you're doing your PREA standards over the last number of years, they added questioning as part of the options for sexual orientation. An administrator can go through and add those drop down menus. So really your system becomes flexible and relevant to what's going on. Also the alerts always show up as part of the face sheet. And so this just gives us information on the youth that's important in regards to self harm, gang affiliation, even things like no contact orders as well. The admission management is really the day-to-day -day operations of the facility. So things like the incident reports, seclusions and restraints, and the seclusions and the restraints are located within the incident reports itself. And so if you're doing an incident report, so it's an example of a fight um, that may involve a seclusion or a restraint, that information can be entered into the system. So we're really trying to streamline the process of the incident report. Also allows you to enter case notes, personal property. Right Track provides a documents tab which allows you to take information that's stored outside of Right Track, such as maybe like an IEP or a court summary that's a paper document. You can scan that and store that within Right Track itself. And also allows within the incident reports for, to do administrative reviews. So there may be those major incident reports that require supervisor or administrator approval, and those can be done within Right Track, but they're also confidential. So the, staff would not have access to that information without permission. Just this, just available, some of the other information um, within uh, the admissions part, things like consents, doing room assignments so they can be configured to your facility, including things like treatment plans or case plans, depending on what you call them. And then I had mentioned the incident reports. The seclusions and the restraints are here shown separately. And so there may be times where you have a seclusion without an incident report, such as maybe for COVID um, and those types of things. So they can be done within the incident reports or outside of incident reports themselves. Within the incident reports, and this is how we've made some changes to really allow for that integration with PBS, is we've done some changes within the events that allow, and you can see this events part, that allows for that seamless integration with the PBS information. So getting a list of the participants. Within Right Track, we do a universal incident report. And so you're creating an incident report and then assigning youth to that incident report. The advantage for something like that from a programming standpoint is that we created the incident report and a fight is a good example. So if two, three kids get involved in a fight, we don't have to write numerous incident reports. We can create one incident report and attach those youth to the incident report. Same thing for the restraint documentation, the seclusion documentation. In the seclusion documentation, as soon as a seclusion is identified, then that starts a seclusion clock. And for some customers, we've even put um, reminders and alerts involving those seclusion clocks. So if they have to be reevaluated after 45 minutes, two hours, uh, administrations will get alerts and reminders to make sure that those things are done. The notes is where staff can put their individual notes within the incident report. And so again, you're creating one incident report if four or five staff are responding, they can include their narratives as part of that. And then the documents tab. The documents tab allows for things like picture documentation, even video documentation can be uploaded. And so if you're able to capture, going back to the same example of a fight, Within the incident report, you can upload that video documentation and now that becomes part of the record within that incident report. Just gave you a screenshot of the printed off view of what an incident report would look like. And so you have your participants, your staff, the events. I had talked about the restraints and the seclusion, doing your narrative and the picture documentation. Screenshot, it's hard to upload a video, but I hope you can see get the flavor of this. In addition to the diff some of the other modules within Right Track, and there's numerous modules within Right Track. I've just tried to pick some, highlight a few that I think would be relevant. Um, we also do a group management. And so this allows you to um, do your group documentation. So what sessions, who attended or who was assigned to attend that group, who actually attended that group. Right Track allows for a universal group note. And so you can create one group note 
and send it to every attendee's record. It also allows for um, an individual progress note that you can add on to that group note. So if something is per related particular to a kid that was in your group, you can add an addendum as part of that. And in doing so, this allows for you to track your group hours. So how many groups are we have been, you know, are we completing within the facility, but also tracking your dosage hours. So how many hours of treatment are we providing for the kids in our facility globally, but also how many hours are is each individual kid receiving of these different groups as well. And so now when we get to the data collection part, we can really start tracking how well we're providing the services within the reporting features within RightTrack. So the, I think the biggest advantage of utilizing RightTrack besides the PBS integration is the reporting of data. So while we're encouraging you to enter as much information within right track as possible. The benefit of it is now we can use that data to see how our facility is operating. Um, and all of, we provide 50 standard reports within the standard module. And there's a whole variety of reports regarding population reports, types of restraints, the number of restraints, seclusion hours, even breaking it down by staff that are involved. And so now we can get really a criteria, of, you know, is there staff, do particular staff maybe have a propensity to be involved in more restraints than other staffs? How many um, restraints are occurring during first shift and second shift? And really using that data to do a deep dive into how effective we're working and, and functioning in our facility. And so really another mirror of what PBS is providing for you as well. All reports are available within RightTrack, but they can be exported as an Excel document or a Word document, even a PDF. We provide global, or what we call global facility reports, so reports that give you a breakdown of everything that's going on in the facility, but you can also do individual and youth-focused reports. And so just doing reports off of one youth, if they have multiple admissions, seeing the totality of incident reports, those types of things as well. And then doing so, we're assuring that we're providing valid and reliable data, not only within the right track system, but in the integration with PBS, and we provide flexibility in the creations and the reports. So that's just kind of our introduction, and here's an example of some of our reports. This is a population report, and also a breakdown of incident reports by type. So again, here's my contact information. I'm gonna go ahead and pass this off to Brendan, and Brendan's gonna talk about what PBS is providing, along with how that integration with PBS and right track functions. Thank you, Steve, and thanks for having me on. I'm glad to be a part of this. Thanks for hosting the webinar here today. Um, and I will do just that. I'll give you a little background on PBS. So for anybody in the audience here that wants to know a little bit more about what we do, and then we'll uh, get into how this integration really works. Uh, the integration is something, I'm, so I'm Brenda Donnie, I'm the Associate Director for Data and Technology, and data is something that's really close to me, so I've been able to be uh, really close to this integration here, so I'm excited to tell you about it. So quick background on PBS and who we are. Um, what's important to know about PBS is that it, it's a continuous improvement model. So when we talk about standards, what sets performance-based standards apart from other accreditation or checklist initiatives or audits or other processes that you might have is that uh, because it's continuous, you never meet the standards. You're always striving to be uh, to the highest level of performance that you can get to. Uh, and PBS has been referred to as that highest set of standards for just that reason. Um, now, we operate at PBS under this vision that all young people in our care are treated like we would our own children. We have a mission that is to challenge all youth serving agencies to deliver the most effective uh, and research supported uh, practices and policies through this model. And this model includes not just those three parts that I showed you on the cycle, but also a mix of expert coaching. There's training and technical assistance. Uh, and really any tools that we can provide to help those agencies achieve positive outcomes. Now, why continuous improvement? It's important to just take a, a little bit of history here about how we came about, because in 1994, there was a big study done on conditions of confinement. And among a handful of uh, findings, what one thing that they found was that uh, those existing accreditation or checklist standards pass fail standards. 
uh, they didn't necessarily mean that facilities were safer. That didn't necessarily mean that just because you had that policy in place that you were going to have safer outcomes. And so there in became the demand for uh, performance based standards in that you are doing measurements and measuring them frequently uh, and always striving to be the highest set that you can get to. So in 1995, uh, PBS was launched. Um, it became an online tool. So just like uh, right track here, it is a web based tool. And uh, in 2004, it was the winner of the Innovations in American Government Award, something that we are still very proud of uh, because it really was a sign that yes, this PBS process that we have is working. Uh, and we've done lots over the years to help expand what PBS does, uh, integrating reentry standards, family involvement, uh, and really going beyond the conditions of confinement that that study originally uh, formed PBS from, but also into programs and services uh, and other pieces that are uh, adjusting with the field of juvenile justice as it is today. So that brings us to where we are today. Uh, and to understand the standards, I just wanna show you there's a lot of information here, but basically there's these nine areas that PBS can be broken into. And we outline these areas through what we call the PBS blueprint. And that's the roadmap to achieving those positive outcomes and sustaining that high performance. This, this document, the blueprint, it connects all the data to those practices and policies, connects it to those outcome measures on all the data and reports that we'll be looking at in just a second here. Uh, that blueprint really is that guide. And facilities use this, they use this in their improvement planning, they use the blueprint in their team meetings, uh, agencies will use this in their strategic planning. Uh, it really is a wonderful way to help connect all the dots. And so this is sort of at the highest level of what PBS is and what it's founded on uh, in these various areas, safety, order, security, et cetera. Uh, but if you wanna know how it works, let's go back to that cycle here. It's a three-part cycle. Collect data, look at it, and then use it. I mean, that's simplifying what these three parts here are. And we do this twice a year. So this is a six-month cycle in, in a essence where we're actually in the middle of a data collection right now. Every April and October, we'll take a snapshot of what's happening in that facility. It's sort of like a, here's what we're looking at in that facility at this point in time and create that snapshot. What you get out of that is a whole boatload of reports. There's a whole lot of information that you're gonna get. And so you, you use that as information to hopefully guide where you wanna go from here. You say, here's where we're at and here's where we wanna go. And you do that through improvement planning. So let me take you through each one of these three parts of that cycle. And I'll start with that data collection. Uh, and I always like to think PBS is kind of unique because there's two sides to this. There's what we call the administrative data, where you've got uh, things like uh, incident reports that we're up, we've already been talking about. You've got uh, records from youth, uh, anything from their intake to the programs and services that they received while they were there at the facility. Uh, we get all kinds of other administrative data like population, race and ethnicity information. Uh, so you tell us during that snapshot, this is what the makeup of our facility is and, and how it went. But then we ask people, and that's the right-hand side of this, is we survey. We survey the kids, we survey the staff, uh, and there's also surveys done of family members of those youth. So it's not just here's what we were doing, but here's how everybody feels about it. And it's a nice system of checks and balances between that data and the survey results, where now you have this look at, here's what we're doing, and here's how people really see that and how, how, it, how it's being implemented here. So there's, there's really two big parts to how that data is collected. Now, once that data is collected, one of the other benefits of PBS is that uh, there are several things, what we call our outcome measures, and you get a sense for uh, where everybody else is, right? So you could do your daily measurement and see how you're doing, maybe how many restraints, um, how many room confinement events, uh, how many uh, kids did better on education scores, whatever that measurement may be, you can do that. Uh, but it's nice to have a little perspective nationwide. So there are close to 200 facilities in 36 states doing PBS and you get a field average. So you know, here's where we are compared to everybody else. Um, everything that you collect data on can get reported back in a handful of various ways. We've got some nice, they're very easy to read reports. Uh, bar graphs, pie charts, uh, lists, whatever it is. Some people like things in different ways and people in different capacities will use this information that they get out of PBS. 
So you get facility staff, get nice and easy to read reports, but if you're an agency that has the benefit of having some kind of data analyst staff or something like that, you can pull down raw data uh, or uh, get these reports in a different way or even get it at the agency level and see multiple facilities within uh, your agency, within your jurisdiction. Uh, we also have some very cool interactive reports. So you can always hit print and bring those uh, to your meetings and have that data to share. Uh, but if you really want to take a dive into data, we've got a few different interactive reports where you can actually slice and dice and play with that information live on the screen. Um, maybe something like those incident reports you want to dive in and say specifically with these confinement events, I want to look at things on a particular unit or time or day of the week or whatever it may be. Um, so these interactive reports is a new way that we've been going. Some of the, the newer reports in PBS have that level of interactivity. Now with lots of data and lots of reports, and I could tell you more about any of these reports, I'd be glad to, but really the data is just a means to an end. Uh, probably that third part of the cycle, the facility improvement planning uh, is the most important, the most significant of those three parts because you can collect data and you can sit there and look at it and analyze it uh, for weeks on end, but what does it come down to is what you do with it. And this is really where rubber meets the road here as far as PBS goes, is uh, once you've been able to look at your information, and that's what it is, it's information. So we're turning that into insights into how our facility is running. Uh, and this is where those other pieces of PBS really come into play. I mentioned expert coaching. So there are coaches assigned to every par PBS participant, um, those of whom who have worked in juvenile agencies throughout their career and work in other states. And they can help share their experiences and also uh, share uh, from the network of facilities that are doing PBS to help guide, hey, if this is where you're at and this is what the data is telling you and you know where you want to go from here, where you'd like to improve, then let's write a plan on how to do it. And we know that that model works. Uh, it takes time, it takes some effort, but it works. And uh, you don't have to just take it from me, the, the technology guy telling you on this webinar here today, uh, if you go on the PBS website, right on the homepage, we've got some great success stories, some videos that you can watch of facilities, long-term care facilities, detention centers, community-based programs who have done PBS and used it to create real sustainable change at their programs. Uh, so I really encourage you to get on the just the homepage of PBS, pbstandards.org, and take a look at some of those videos, because uh, that really helps put it into perspective of, of how this is being used and, and the value that people see in doing PBS, because I've seen it time and time again, uh, but hopefully you can hear it from them as well. We do know that it works. But like I mentioned, uh, it does take time and effort, and that's why we're here today is to talk about how to use technology to make that uh, a little bit easier, make it a lot easier. In this case, there's quite a bit of a difference here. Um, and there's actually, there's two ways that PBS has really been looking at trying to lower the amount of effort that it takes to do PBS data collections uh, through technology. And one way that we've been doing that is through our survey kiosk. So I mentioned one thing that we do is we survey kids, survey families. Um, collect surveys of uh, staff members, and all that can be done on paper, but boy, is it much easier to do it on a touch screen where those surveys are just taken on the, um, the kiosk. It's a device that they can hold, tap the screen to answer the questions on the survey, and it eliminates the need for anybody to get on a computer and do any kind of data entry. You don't have to take that piece of paper and enter it into uh, a web portal of any kind. You just, the survey data goes straight there, uh, and one of the other benefits to these touch screens um, and, and something that we've been seeing for a while here is that in particular with the, um, the youth climate survey is that because there's that protection of anonymity, I'm not just handing a piece of paper back to the staff member that um, asked me these survey questions. It's going straight into that PBS reporting system. Uh, we're seeing a higher participation rate. Uh, and really just the fact that the, the kids get a touch screen for a little bit, I think they're a little bit more excited to participate in that, that survey process. So this has been a great tool. And again, it eliminates the need for data entry when you're collecting these surveys. So that's one way that we're reducing uh, data entry time. And the other reason, way that we're doing it is through software integration. So that's exactly why we're here now is to talk about uh, software integration. And here's where the benefit lies. So picture an incident report and you've got a data management system that you guys are using and you enter that incident report 
into that data management system. And now you're also doing PBS, which is that twice a year snapshot, and it's that time of year to do my PBS uh, data collection. So I'm gonna take that same incident report, and now that person doing that data entry is entering it in two places. Once for data management uh, and my daily operations, and then again for PBS for my continuous improvement model. What we're talking about with the software integration is we take that same incident report now, and if RightTrack is your data management system, you enter that incident report into right track and then instead of having to go enter that same incident report into the pbs system the right track software because of its integration actually handles the transfer of the data over to pbs but this is actually a little bit bigger than just a a transfer of data this isn't just sending data from one system to another this is this is actual full uh, software integration it uses technology uh, known as an application programming interface or an api so this is a two-way street, right? Both these software applications are talking to each other. And so uh, a good example of why this is better than just a data transfer would be, let's say you find a data entry error on that incident report. Somebody checked the wrong box. They uh, entered a wrong date or a wrong time or something like that. It's very common, it's easy to do. Um, now under the, the other model, if you don't have an integration, you'd have to go into both systems, one at each time and make that uh, data entry fix. But in this integration here, you still go back into your source data, which is your right track system, and right track handles the update in PBS at the same time. So that's where this, I mean, it, not only are you saving on the data entry side, but you're also saving by keeping these two things basically in sync with each other during those data collection months. So you get the best of both worlds there, and it really reduces that amount of data entry time. If your staff are spending less time on the keyboard and entering things into the computer. They're spending more time on the floor with the kids and that's what's most important here. So assuming that we get all that data in, um, what you get is the best of both worlds. You're gonna get all that same reporting out of right track for your daily operations, what you could see on your day to day. Um, you're gonna get that there in right track while also getting all of the PBS reporting and data and all those pieces that are going to inform your continuous improvement and your facility improvement plans, you get the best of both worlds, but with half the data entry, half the data entry time. So that's where this really is the big, the big savings here and the big benefit of having these two things uh, combined is that the effort goes down significantly when doing them, uh, but you still get the benefits of both. And the benefits of both are, are there and, I, and I, I'm glad to talk about anything else in PBS, um, but I know we're getting close to that half hour point. So uh, Steve, why don't you tell me where we're at and um, take it from here. Yeah, we are exactly it. Um, we got two minutes left. So which leaves us, you know, we want to be respectful of people's time. So if you if you you have something else and you need to jump off at the half hour point, feel free to do so. Um, but we also wanted to give people some uh, a chance to answer questions. So if you're out there and you just want to put a question in the uh, uh, questions box and you can submit that to us, a couple of people have already submitted a couple of questions. Um, but just in the people's time remaining, um, we want to give you an opportunity to do that while we're waiting for some people to respond with questions. Um, just one of the things um, I think that's important that kind of talks about just kind of this relationship also with right track and PBS is uh, that review section that we added to the incident reports was really part of that change was uh, with the PBS integration in mind of saying as the administrator or supervisor is reviewing that and we're changing that information, we have to make an adjustment to the incident report or whatever. Now we allow for that integration, that real time sharing of information from the right track system over to the PBS system as well. So, um, so we have a couple of questions. One question is, can you tell me a little bit more about the programming function in this program? And so do you, I mean, you want to take that? I, I, because I, I, that could mean a couple of different things. Um, yeah, I was going to say, if we're talking about programming, that could be um, on, on the PBS side. There's a few different ways that we look at programs and services delivered. 
Uh, and then I know you also touched on groups and groups. dosage within okay. groups. Um, so uh, I think within within each one of these, let me talk about PBS for a second. And uh, so there's there's two elements that we look at programs and services. One is on that youth record. So we collect youth records. Uh, it's almost kind of like a, a case file, which is very much in line with that person management that uh, Steve mentioned that Right Track does here. So basically you've got a youth and we collect information at the time that they are released. And that information includes their entire stay. So it's going to go from intake, uh, screenings, and assessments. Did those assessments inform a treatment plan? What was part of that treatment plan? And what did they get during that treatment plan? And that includes education, uh, vocational, um, yeah, any, any other pieces along the way uh, as, in terms of their treatment plan. And then also connects it to their aftercare plan. And that, so that's specifically for the long uh, commitment sites, the long term sites where we're connecting it. So here's the treatment that they got, where they were in the facility and where the ties made back home to the community, wherever they're going after they leave that facility. Are there those connections, those referrals being made? So that's at the youth record level. And then we also do something what we call our unit log, which is um, essentially a look at the programs and so services offered throughout the course of the day. So in a day on that facility, uh, how much time did the majority of youth on that unit spend in school, uh, spend in recreational programs, spend in any other kind of programming? Uh, did they have leisure time or um, were there any other sort of operational activities throughout the day, like shift changes and that sort of thing? So it paints the picture of here during our waking hours, these are the types of programs and services that occurred during the day. And we do that on a per living unit basis. So if you're the type of facility that has uh, like different pods or different living units like that, you got that comparison where you could say, okay, here's what the, the day looked like on pod A versus pod B or whatever your facility sort of design is like. It's going to depend uh, based on your facility design. But those are two ways that we look at programs and services in PBS. Uh, as, that's the short version. So Steve, what about, uh, what about groups and that piece? Yeah, so groups is, uh, we have a lot of customers that use groups as part of their programming functionality. Uh, and so they will use um, groups um, to, to address things like the anger management groups. If there's um, if they're doing a CBT type groups, they can use some of those group functionality within right track to, to, to address. So what are the, um, you know, what are the identifying needs? And in addition to that, the groups function can also be linked with the uh, treatment plans as well. And so if you're identifying treatment plans such as anger management, they have to do things like an anger management journal, um, uh, uh, you know, identifying triggers and those types of things. So if those are those things that are identified within the groups, or I'm sorry, within the treatment plan, then you can identify those objectives in addition to um, the the, the case management or the data entry within the group functionality as well. So we do a lot of, of kind of that ability to do, um, we call them treatment plans on the facility side. On the probation side, we call them case plans. They're a little simpler, little simpler on the probation side, but the same type of functionality as well. We also, for some customers have done uh, wristbands that kind of go along with, um, um, what Brendan was talking about of where kids are at and what they're doing, that also allows for things like meal counts, uh, how many kids. So if you're through the school lunch program and those types of things, you can do um, keep track of you know kids that participate in lunch and breakfast and so forth and, and, and those types of things as well. Um, we also keep track from a programming standpoint, who's approved for visitation and who's approved for phone calls keeping track of when those visits uh, actually, and again, we, Brendan and I talked, we were trying to make this 15 minutes for everybody, but we could, both of us can spend hours talking about um, both PBS and Right Track um, and the integrations as well, but um, also allow for, uh, for approved phone calls, uh, when those phone calls occurred, who they were with, same for approved visitors, and we can categorize them by within the calendar function. And so you can print off who's, these are the kids that are approved for visits. And we've also integrated for some customers through our customization 
options of incorporating electronic signatures for that as well. So parents are signing off on treatment plans, kids are signing off on treatment plans, those types of things as well. We have a couple more questions and I wanna to get to those. Um, thank you so much for submitting these. Um, and, and if some of us, if we don't get a chance to address all of the questions, um, your name is associated with that and, and we'll do our best. We can maybe send you an email and a response with that as well. Um, one of the questions was if the current practice is to have staff involved in an incident report, write up the incident report, how does right track handle multiple incident reports the same incident? How do you say a news news how would you say that we could attach a use name to, but the same incident that would be true for staff as well? So yes. And so and one of the other questions that I think we get along with that is uh, when you're creating a universal incident report, and I always go back to the example of a fight is because it's an easy uh, explanation of the universal incident reports. And so we all know when the fight occurred, we all know who participated in the fight, and we know that the staff that responded to that. And so you create the narrative and then you're attaching the use name to that. So if there's four kids that participated in that fight those are the four kids that the incident report is written off of the same with the staff um, however the documentation can be separate for that so while four kids may have been involved in the fight just for argument's sake only maybe two of those kids actually ended up getting restrained because the fight was dispersed and so the restraint documentation then becomes to the two kids that actually got restrained. The documentation is not part of that. So you're continuing to include the kids as you move through the stages of the incident report or excluding the kids. Same thing with the room confinement. If room confinement was warranted for only one, then that's where the, the room confinement documentation starts. The other kids that are involved in that are part of that documentation as well. In addition, the common question we get is, uh, well, then when you print off the entire incident report, what about the security, which is a feature that we can uh, add to the system as well. And so that we're redacting kids information so we can keep confidential information confidential as well. So that was kind of the long explanation. Um, a lot of these, some of these right track questions maybe are a little easier once you see the functionality of the system. It's hard to do that when we're just doing screenshots. Um, but We'd be happy to show that to you in a little bit more detail if that's something that you're interested. And then the last question is, somebody said, how long have we been doing this? And so we, it was funny, Brendan and I look back on it and uh, coming in October of this year, it will have been four years that we've had this right track PBS integration as well. And so it's not something that we just have done um, in, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we have experience doing this. We've been successful in doing this. And that puts us, you know, four, four years puts us at eight reporting periods almost, give or take, depending on when we started. So we've been successful um, and, and can show evidence of that as well. And uh, because we're in a data collection right now for PBS, that integration is on and running as we speak. And that's a fantastic point. You know, my hope is, and, and without not, you know, I don't, I don't, we don't know everybody's function, but if you're one of the people that are required to do the data entry in your system and the data entry in the PBS system, imagine how much simpler it would be if we could utilize this integration opportunity with between right track and PBS. So we've gone a little bit over. I, I, I appreciate those of you who uh, submitted questions. For some of those, we weren't able to get to those, but we will, we keep a log of the questions and we'll get back and respond to you those um, in, in person through an email for you as well. Brendan, anything you wanna say or, or wrap up before we let people go on their way? No, nope, those are some great questions. So I appreciate everybody. And, and Steve, like I said, I appreciate you hosting this webinar today. Hopefully we gave some good information to all of you. Brendan, we appreciate you participating and we hopeful it was, I'm hopeful it was helpful to everyone. Thank you so much, uh, everyone out there for participating and showing interest in this webinar. Please reach out to us if you have any questions, um, both on the PBS side and on the right track side. 
um, we're more than happy to, to be of assistance um, and, and give you any more additional information. And as we go, just a quick reminder, if you just take a few moments and complete the survey at the end, uh, both of us would really appreciate that. We're gonna go ahead and wrap things up. Thanks so much, people. And uh, we hope you have a great rest of the day and have a great week. Take care. Take care, bye-bye.